Hello and welcome to Server Virtualization Made Simple. As an IT salesperson, there are just three things you need to know about server virtualization. What it is, why the fuss, and who is buying it. Virtualization is a broad term and can be applied to many systems both inside and outside of IT. It describes the ability to break a system into elements and then to simulate and control the interactions between them. Elements can be moved or even changed and the system keeps working. If applied well, this can yield massive advantages for the system design in terms of flexibility. You may be familiar with the functionality of a RAID controller often found in servers or high-end workstation PCs. A RAID controller sits in between the operating system, like Microsoft Windows, and the physical hard drives. Although not often categorised as virtualization technology, the RAID controller is a great example of how virtualization works. The RAID controller allows a number of disks to be combined into a pack. However, Windows only gets a simulated view of them via the controller. It sees just one big disk. Behind the controller, disks can be added on the fly and disks can even fail and get replaced and Windows is none the wiser. Selling servers without considering RAID as an option could be doing your customers a disservice. Equally, if you are not discussing virtualization with your customers, you may be doing yourself a disservice. Virtualization can be applied to many systems within IT. These can be hardware or software or a combination. Common systems where virtualization can be applied are servers, desktop PCs, storage, applications and networks. As this is a simple introductory overview, we shall have a quick look at server virtualization and find out what all the fuss is about. You can see that a server is a system which can be broken down into three logical elements as shown. Rather than just splitting out the hard disks as we did in the RAID controller example, this time we will separate all of the hardware in the system away from the software, which comprises of the operating system plus any software applications that are loaded. The green virtualization layer that we have introduced here is called a hypervisor. It is in fact a layer of software which is typically installed onto the server hardware before any operating system or other software is loaded. Hypervisors have been developed by a number of vendors, including VMware, Microsoft and Citrix, among others. The combination of operating system and applications in this scenario is referred to as a virtual machine, or VM. This is because it represents, for all intents and purposes, the identity and function of the server. The hardware simply provides computing resources to this virtual machine, such as processing power, storage, memory and network access. Note that at this stage, the server system will behave exactly the same as before the hypervisor was added. We have changed the architecture of the system internally, but not actually achieved any real benefits yet. The biggest single reason that server virtualization is set to dominate future data centers is that non-virtualized servers are typically running at well under 10% utilization. In other words, the resources provided by today's hardware are massively bigger than a single server typically needs. Given the economic pressures to save costs, not to mention the green agenda, this means traditional servers are wasteful and not a sustainable way forwards. With server virtualization, we can now replace physical machines with virtual machines. If you have customers with server systems which are nearing end of life, this may be a far better option than simply replacing them physically. The cost and energy savings are very obvious. It is estimated that the number of virtual server sales worldwide exceeded physical server sales during 2009. The server world is going virtual. This is why server virtualization is so important for you. The more powerful your host server, the more virtual machines can be hosted. Ten or more virtual machines on a single server is not uncommon. There are big advantages to having more than a single physical or host server. In this example we have two physical servers. From all the major virtualization vendors, it is now possible to move virtual machines from one host to another without disrupting the operation of the virtual machine. This provides two distinct benefits. The first 
is that server loads can be distributed across the physical systems. This leads to the idea of a pool of host servers providing resources as and when required to the virtual machines. If a peak in load on a particular virtual machine is expected, for instance for month-end accounts and payroll, it can be moved to a host system with more capacity available. The second key benefit is to do with resilience. If physical server A requires some routine maintenance, we can move all virtual machines onto alternative hosts. The maintenance could be carried out, zero downtime of any applications achieved, and virtual machines return to this host once up again. In the case of unplanned outages, when a physical server fails, it is possible to bring up the respective virtual machines onto alternative hosts quickly and easily. It is even possible with some implementations to have automated fault tolerance, whereby a standby virtual machine can take over from a failed system instantaneously. Moving virtual machines between hosts is a relatively quick task. However, so far we have not considered the data that each virtual machine has access to. Clearly, if the virtual machines on physical server A hold a lot of data, it could take some time to transfer the data to server B. The answer is to use shared storage or network storage. This architectural change happens below the virtualization layer and so does not impact virtual machine operation. The virtualized infrastructure allows VMs to move between hosts and the data is accessible from wherever they reside. This then is the typical shape of a virtualized server infrastructure. The introduction of network storage is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, as an IT salesperson, this can be increased sales opportunity for you. The risk is that, certainly for smaller customers, the cost of entry into virtualization is increased and may even be prohibitive. The size of your customer's estate and the cost versus benefits of moving to a virtualized infrastructure have to be weighed up. Server virtualization is being considered by many organizations across all industry sectors. Systems have traditionally been deployed with at least one server per application. This has led to server sprawl, systems devouring money and electrical power. Virtualization holds the promise of radically reducing capital and operational costs, improving systems agility, and with the right management tools and processes can even help reduce operational risks. Typically, organizations need to be operating at least five to ten traditional servers for the move to make any economic sense. Often, the move to virtualization is considered when legacy systems are nearing end of life. Also remember that in this primer, we have only given a brief introduction to server virtualization. There are many factors which will determine the best path for your customer, and each solution will be different. As pointed out at the beginning, there are many other areas where virtualization technology can be applied. It is your challenge to make sure those conversations are being led by your organization. Many new technologies in IT represent new opportunity, but if your salespeople don't get it, they won't sell it. To Decipher translates the complexities of IT into what sellers need to know. To find out more, visit our website at www.tudecipher.com.